generating more power this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. Today we're going to be taking a look at how I actually generate power on the road and, well, when I'm parked. Generating power on the road is pretty easy, you just hook into the vehicle's alternator, charges your battery, you're good to go. However, when you're living van life and you're staying in one place for a week at a time and you're not driving around every day, it can actually be a fair bit more difficult because, well, you don't want to idle your van, that can be hard on the engine. So, most people tend to lean towards solar power, and that's going to be what we're talking about today. When I picked up the Marshmallow, it actually had two 160-watt Mitsubishi panels that Darren put on, like, eight or nine years ago. Technology's changed quite a lot since then, and on top of that, they were mounted on a roof rack that caused a lot of wind issues and uh, whistling and inefficiency, you know, MPG hits. And I just didn't quite like the look of it. So as a temporary solution, I pulled all that off and I put on some thin film, uh, flexible sun power solar panels I had from when I used to live in a 30 foot camper. These worked all right for about a month and a half or so. And then I went down to Texas and on my way back from Texas, I got stuck in Denver due to snow. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. Long story short, water got under the solar panels and cracked them in a way that I wasn't anticipating. These panels are designed to be mounted to a flat rubber roof of like a camper or something, not the ridged roof of something like a Mercedes Sprinter 2500. So fast forward to today, and we just finished putting on 400 watts to 200 watt panels. These panels are all right, but the key was the mounting system. Uh, like I said, I didn't want a roof rack. I didn't want something constantly generating wind noise and buffeting and reducing my MPG or looking like it, you know, is just a big rack sitting on top of the van. I wanted something that was a lot more slim, low profile, that you'd have a hard time telling, wait, those are solar panels. People call this stealth camping or stealth van life or something like that. And I think that's a bit fancy. Uh, I don't want everyone to immediately look at me and go, wait, that's a camper. But I also don't really want to go so hard into it that I'm lacking functionality. Anyway, let's uh, let's get out of the weeds here and start looking at how we actually mounted these panels. Believe it or not, the part that took the longest was actually peeling up the old panels. I had used a tape called Everbond that, as the name implies, sticks very well to smooth surfaces like the roof of the van. It's a butyl-based thing. Anyway, it was absolutely hellish to pull off. If I had to do it again, I'd probably use canned air to freeze it and make it brittle. As you can see, there's still a bunch of remnants I left up here that I just didn't really care enough to remove, and they'll probably peel off with age. After that was finished, I grabbed my drill and a wire brush, as well as a can of white spray paint, and, as you can see, there's some rust spots on the roof I felt like I had to address before they got any worse. Yeah, this paint isn't the proper color-matched automotive-grade paint that the van should be getting, but it's also an 8-year-old van, and it's on the roof where no one's going to see it, so I figured as long as it was uh, the rust conversion paint, it'd take care of the job, and it'd be good for several years to come. Especially since the panels go right over this area. And speaking of those panels, this was about the point I realized I made a big mistake. These panels are 26.8 inches, not 26.3 inches wide. Somewhere I had got it stuck in my head that they were 26.3 inches wide, and that I'd have the room of a bolt hole in the slotted material on either side that I could perfectly mount into the rails. It did not end up being that easy. So we were pretty bummed at this point because we had all the equipment out, we'd already cut the metal, and realized that that was an issue. We got everything thrown up on the roof of the van, realized it wasn't going to fit, pulled it all back down, and just sat for about mm, 35, 45 minutes looking at what we had to work with. Didn't want to make another trip out to Home Depot, didn't want to uh, uh, settle for something lesser, you know, like only using one panel, because I need this power, especially this time of year. 
Then I realized, oh, these panels are actually perfectly the width that I can line up some extensions off the rails, turn everything 90 degrees, and it'll bolt right into the aluminum track on the roof of the van. And that's what we did, and you can see for yourself, it turned out great. Now earlier I mentioned something to the effect of this time of year. Specifically, I'm up in the PNW. We're getting like eight and a half hours of sunlight throughout the entire day, and where I tend to park isn't exactly the greatest for sun throughout the whole day either. So I've got to get as much power in in as short a time as possible. Once we get past like uh, December 21st and we start getting into January, as long as it doesn't snow, I should actually be a lot better off than I currently am. Now where's all this power going? Well, that's going into an AC200 battery bank. In a previous video, I talked about how to make a custom DIY battery bank. That was a temporary holdover until I got this battery unit. And it works all right, uh, but I'm going to actually be replacing that in a future video because it's got some flaws that I wasn't entirely privy to, but that's a subject for a later video. So be sure to stick around if you're liking the off-grid power stuff. Anyway, that's about all I have for you this time. Uh, this went together pretty quick. I'm pretty happy with it, at least with the hardware that's currently accompanying it. And I can't wait to bring more off-grid power stuff to you. This is one of my favorite things to do because it allows you to be truly self-sufficient. And I feel like that's important for hackers and hacker culture to not have to rely on outside influences for even something as simple as power. The more we can do ourselves and the more we can generate and create for ourselves, the more empowered we are. So think on that, I guess, that philosophical bombshell. Anyway, I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.